We have with us Keshav Murugesh, global CEO of WNS Global Services. Uh, Keshav, uh, this is one of the biggest transformation which is going to happen for your industry because the biggest disruption is happening at your industry level, right? As digitization comes in, the BPO industry is itself at risk. What do you have to say about that? Actually, we are not at any risk. And this is a question that I've been asked for at least two years now. I must say that at this point in time, I must give a lot of comfort around the fact that the BPM industry is the one industry that has transformed itself, frankly, not over the past two years, but over the past five years in terms of co-opting all these models, you know, the so-called disruptive models that you spoke of, speak about, social, mobile, analytics, cloud, artificial intelligence, robotics, process automation, into our business models as a result of which we continue to grow extremely well. We continue to drive, you know, lots of, you know, uh, potential with our clients. Our strategic messages are resonating well. We have moved up the value stream. The only thing that's happening is we are now driving non-linear models of growth. So, for example, at WNS, you know, we have actually for the past two quarters upped our guidance, both top line and bottom line. So, at this point in time, we have gone to the market with a guidance of 11.5% constant currency, you know, for the full year. But our headcount may not grow at the same pace. Our headcount will probably grow at 7 or 8%. That's all that is being uh, seen as a result of you know, some of these uh, disruptive trends. What they're actually doing is enabling us to leverage automation and these models at the lowest end of the value chain and really take out repetitive tasks that human beings do and you know replace them by, with software scripts so what and percentage move. of your organization or of the revenues will that be so the the beauty is you know uh, if you look at it of the entire revenue that we have we are constantly enhancing the value of our organization and our business mix so it's very difficult for me to answer that question because we are all the time infusing technology into our business model uh, and the reason again for doing that is because uh, we need to deliver four to five percent of productivity each year and like i said yeah. we are growing at 11 11 and a half percent which means i'm actually growing at 16 16 and a half percent to announce 11 and a half to deliver that five percent we are required to do all of these things so and that's the reason why you probably are noticing there is no negative messaging coming on the bpm industry at this point in time we don't leverage h1b visas we have actually co-opted all these models into our business model and we are in a very comfortable position at this point in time in terms of our growth rates as well as the future momentum so what about the employee hiring part of it at some point of time the bpo industry was the job creator for the industry right i mean anyone who graduated from this college would land up in a bpo today it's more about skill a uh, person having uh, ai knowledge of ai automation digitization all those things are required are you getting that kind of skills or you you know you're skilling your existing workforce to um, ensure that you are able to take up the high end job and thereby higher margins so that's an excellent question and i must first of all give you comfort that in my role as the chairman of nascom's bpm council I am very focused on making sure that every kind of business process management area that India is good at, we are developing. Whether it is the, you know, contact center area, moving to more customer interaction services, you know, kind of uh, processes, the domain-based processes, finance and accounting, you know, analytics. All of this together is really part of my domain and I'm driving growth in every one of these areas. And I'm really happy to say that actually growth is happening very well to India's BPM industry as a result. One. Second thing is because of the change in the business model and the expectations of clients, the, uh, you know, the, the fact that we have all moved to more digital models and much more smarter uh, solution sets for our clients, mm -hmm. we have actually, I would say, expanded the shores of India beyond India. So when you look at, say, at WNS, we now deliver from 12 countries, right? If you recall, two years ago, we changed the acronym BPO to BPM. Because today, we have now introduced a model to clients as a result of which they do not have to manage different vendors in different geographies. They can hand over an end-to-end -end process to a WNS and we will manage the complexity across six countries across the globe. So the reality is, we have actually started creating jobs and expanding the jobs uh, creation uh, model in India. But at the same time, we are actually creating jobs in the US, in China, 
in the Philippines, in all these other geographies as well, as we have expanded the complexity of the services we give to our. So are uh, you saying that you're creating job opportunities there in terms of onshore job yes, opportunities? Yes, absolutely. And how is that uh, happening? Uh, because the client would be coming to you to reduce its cost, and that's why it's coming to the BPM absolutely. industry. And you're uh, raise, uh, you're you're putting up uh, you know your shared centers and onshore. How does the cost uh, arithmetic work out in that I'll sense? I'll explain to you. I'll explain to you. The reason we are able to do that is essentially because we are much smarter in terms of driving some of those disruptive models that the client is not able to incorporate. We incorporate that into our business model. We drive that you know, diligently across our delivery centers. We make sure that the efficiency that we have had you know, possibly in India is also leveraged across every one of our you know, centers globally and we leverage the shared services model. So while, you know, while in individual countries, profitability may vary on an overall blended basis as how I have to look at my company, my margin actually continues to be very, very strong. So I hope I was able to so answer the question. How much margin expansion were you able to achieve through that kind of model in the last two or three years? So if you just look at WNS's results itself, you will see that we are one company that has consistently guided the market towards you know, uh, operating margins in the high teens. Right? And we have been delivering year on year. So you know, clearly the model is working in spite of the fact that you know, we are not just leveraging India from a delivery point of view, we are now leveraging 11 other countries as well. Of our 33,000 employees, today about 22,000 are based in India, 12,000 are based outside. So it's a true global business process management model producing tremendous impact to our clients. Now, you've been very optimistic in your commentary, but I just came off the NASCOM press conference and there they have deferred the entire guidance by a quarter, saying that there are uncertainties which they can't see and they want to speak to industry global clients and industry leaders before they come out with the guidance, hopefully next quarter. What, what is this change? I mean, you are optimistic, but they are very cautious. Uh, I can't figure out why uh, you know there's such a uh, you know difference in uh, the outlook of BPM industry and the IT BPM industry. See, let me let me try to address that. Uh, so it's not uh, you know, BPM versus the rest in this case. It is NASCOM's guidance as a whole. And the reality is, you have to appreciate that when NASCOM produces a guidance. It produces a guidance for the industry as a whole. It is not just BPM or engineering services or startups or you know any of those areas or GICs, but also the IT services side. At this point in time, there are two things happening. One is there's a lot of noise around what could happen to the visa regime, what could happen uh, around the whole border tax, you know, some of which have not even been announced. It's just noise that is uh, taking place. So I think all the NASCOM is doing is saying that, you know, while you know we have a good sense of where we are likely to be, let's wait for one more quarter uh, while some of these things play out. Before and and for companies to actually announce not only their year-end revenues but also their guidance for the next year and incorporate them into a firmer guidance. That's all that is being done. But you know, you are from the BPM industry, and BPM industry is fairly insulated from those uh, global headwinds because of the kind of model you, which you guys are doing it. What is the kind of growth rate for BPM industry in India and uh, you know, are we looking at uh, t 10 to 12 percent or are we looking at sub 10 percent growth for BPM industry? Look, I must again say NASCOM produces one number across all our councils. So it, it would not be right for me to try and take a pick of you know, I'm a growth talking rate about your industry for our industry. Yeah. But I will tell you WNS as a company, I already said you know, we have guided the market towards 11.5% growth rate for fiscal 2017, right? And that is higher than... Fiscal 2017 means March 2017 and? Uh, yeah, March yeah. 2017. What about 17, 18? We'll give that guidance next quarter, you know, when we actually go to the market with our year-end results. And it would be still double-digit growth rate, which you can see, foresee as, am, as of now? I am confident at this point in time that there's, there, should be, there is no reason why we should not be delivering double-digit constant currency growth rates. What, what another thing about it is a direct growth, uh, jobs growth rate, uh, which the BPM industry has been known for. Are you seeing contraction in the direct job growth uh, happening in in the BPM industry as we take up more, uh, you know, machine learning, uh, automation coming up? No, actually, what is uh, again? I must we must go back to the market penetration levels for BPM. Uh, and you yourself said I sound quite positive and bullish. We are all very positive about the uh, prognosis for our industry in the medium term. Because we still believe that the, uh, the demand trends are showing nascency 
and still showing that the industry is under penetrated because uh, you know when i sign new contracts with new clients these days you know sometimes it's shocking to see that some of these companies you know who have t tied up for the first time are actually 100 year old companies right which means there is still potential for bringing new clients into this industry that's one at the same time the complexity of services that we are offering to clients is dramatically changing so against very low end kind of services that we were offering you know all of us have kept moving up the value chain some of us have moved significantly up the value chain and, and are, are delivering across the globe you know so we are driving non linear models of growth right so while all of this is happening you also have to look at you know what is likely to happen from an india government point of view from an india domestic spend point of view and i think the india indian government has worked very strongly in terms of coming up with a new bpo policy i'm sure they'll refine that policy you know over a period of time the whole intent is to ensure that this policy is driving you know uh, better results for indian companies as well and at the same time creating more jobs in tier 2 tier 3 locations and as you would have seen the nascom projections we have seen growth in the headcount not at 8.6 so i think uh, it was uh, 8.6% was the growth projected i think for um, for, for for revenue yeah. and uh, but but the the headcount is about 5% or something like yeah. that so that's what is happening with the industry right but what will be needed will be better skills smarter people people who understand you know business domains better who understand automation better and that's the maturing of the industry so finally you know give me a sense of what is the kind of headwind you're seeing for your industry i know it's a headwind for it services and if you can give me an idea of where where is the headwind coming in for your industry which can you know force you to look at a guidance less than 11.5% for the next fiscal see i'll tell you when brexit happened people said that you know and uh, you have exposure to brexit as yeah well. people said that we would be you know that all of us would be in deep trouble the reality is i told you over the last two quarters we have up guidance brexit has again been incorporated in our business model and we are you know uh, being even smarter in terms of going out to the market with you know more strategic messages it is actually working very well from a sales pipeline point of view uh, with the new election uh, rhetoric there is a lot of noise around you know what will uh, happen from the us point of view when the new president came in in the philippines there was a lot of noise of in terms of what would happen out there the reality is ours is a strategic tool what we do is a strategic tool now these things will keep happening right we have to continue to stay relevant and continue to give strategic messages and give value to our clients and we will continue to grow so from my point of view i think whatever is in our control we will manage elegantly what is not in our control i really don't know you know what will happen if clients say we're not going to outsource that is something we'll have to face at that point in time but i don't see that as an issue clearly kesha the entire industry is in a you know transition phase in terms of transformation and in terms of how the new business models come in thank you very much for joining us on bloomberg thank you so much thank you thank you